Hi guys, it's Rachel and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be all about this. You guys have been asking me about my sofa, where it's from, and so on and so forth. And this is going to actually be the second installment in my apartment series and in my apartment decorating and stuff like that. So um, this is going to be a long one and I'm going to go into explaining like literally everything about this sofa because it's such a statement piece in our home and yeah, we're pumped about it. I also have all the timestamps for everything. So any of you commenters who are like, where's the DIY? We just want to see how it's made. We don't want to talk about price. We don't want to talk about where everything's from. We just want to see how you got it done. I'll have the timestamps for you in the description box below. I really suggest you guys watching the entire video because I'm going to go into a lot of questions that you may have, how much it costs, comparable sofas on the market, why we decide to go the DIY route instead of buying a regular sofa and so on and so forth. So with that being said, Please keep on watching. Fun. So the sofa sits actually in our living room. Our place isn't very big. I'll have the episode that has our empty apartment up in the cards up here. But basically we knew we wanted a large sofa because we work from home. We love having our friends over and just chilling. Um, we also really needed a space where people were going to be able to sleep and also a place for Dylan and I to sleep in the meanwhile while our bed comes in and while we still need to get a mattress. So there were so many things um, on our list and we really wanted our sofa to check off all the boxes. So we decided to kind of narrow it down and the main things we wanted was an L-shaped sofa that was comfortable to seat at least four people. We also wanted it to be able to sleep at least two people and we also wanted it to just be very deep. Um, I love a super deep sofa where you're able to just kind of crawl up and watch a movie. So all those things were really important to us and also it had to be comfortable. And also ideally under $2,000. Now, hold up. I know a lot of you are probably like, oh my God, $2,000 is like a lot of money. Mind you, I live in Toronto, Canada. So if you guys are coming in from the States, $2,000 is roughly, what, 1,400 in the States? $2,000 is roughly 1400 USD. So keep that in mind. So we were on a kind of tight budget, but everything I liked was quite expensive. So inspo, the mood board. I'll have my whole apartment mood board linked on Pinterest, including some other sofas that I really liked. I really love sofas that were low to the ground, like very almost Japanese inspired. I love like sofas that are just wide and deep and like super lush and comfy. I didn't want anything too traditional. Ideally, my favorite sofa in the entire world, and if you guys haven't gone into a restoration hardware and checked it out already, you guessed it, it is the Cloud Couch by Restoration Hardware. It is just iconic. Kylie Jenner has one of these in her homes. Pretty much everyone fancy has one of these in their homes. They're so comfortable and so worth it if you have the money. I, however, do not have over $10,000 to spend on a sofa. So that was kind of out of the cards for us. So I want something really earthy and I definitely wanted linen. I wanted something similar to the Restoration Cloud Couch without the Cloud Couch price tag. So for me, it was really important to try to get it as similar as I can. I knew realistically, we weren't gonna be able to DIY the Restoration Cloud Couch to like an exact T, but I think we did a pretty good job and you guys will see later on in the video. Let's look at some of the things that I actually wanted. So I added in all of the Restoration Hardware price for a couch that's similar in size to this and pretty much excluding sales tax, if I were to buy the Restoration Hardware sofa, that I wanted in this dimension, roughly around this dimension, it would have cost me $12,929, which includes the $250 delivery fee. Can't do that. Girls on a budget, but I really, really like it. It's really beautiful. That's definitely like the $3 sign option. So something a little bit more mid-range is similar to what we have and even more still on the expensive side. I still find this very expensive for a sofa, but if you are furnishing a home that you own and can justify the price, you can afford it, you're making that bank, this is a really nice option. It is by CB2. It's the Arlo three-piece wide arm sectional sofa. And this one Canadian is $4,597 before tax. And also I believe that there is also a delivery fee. This one is really, really pretty as well. Really wide set. 
Then I decided to go down a little bit further and this I say would be like the $2 sign mark and this would be similar to the price point that we were looking at. More on the high end I would say, but you know. Um, this is from Wayfair and this is the Octavio sectional. This retails for $2,429 before tax. And I believe that there is free shipping on this one, which is really, really amazing. This one is similar to the dimensions. It's actually a little bit smaller, not a sleeper sofa and has a mid-century modern feel. Like this one too, again, I've never actually seen this one in person and it's not like Wayfair has a showroom or anything. So it's kind of a con for this one, but it's overall, it's super cute. It just is a little bit smaller than what we would have wanted. Then we'll move on to, I guess, another one. And I think a lot of people are gonna ask me, why didn't you just get an Ikea sofa? Um, Ikea sofas are actually really, really expensive. I didn't even know this like going into it, but I looked at one that was like similar in style, meaning that it's a sectional and you're able to add all the pieces as you please. And I found a shape that would have been similar to what we wanted. And that would have been $1,750. And it is the Valentuna sofa. I actually have the Ottomans in my studio at like my mom's house and it's super, super nice. But again, I felt like if I was gonna be spending upwards of $2,000 on something, I really wanted it to not be Ikea. No offense to Ikea. I just feel like Ikea is more for like, I guess, more affordable furniture. And if I was going to go up and buy something that was going to be higher quality or over a thousand dollars, I really wanted it to be kind of hearty. And then we'll move on to the least expensive sofa that is most similar to the one that we have. And it is the struck tube sofa. This is called horizon. It's a sectional sofa that is $1,699. And then also you would be paying the $99 shipping fee. I believe because they have to ship it right to your home and you can't ship it and pick it up at your store. You know what I mean? This one is very similar in terms of color and everything. It's quite low to the ground, which I like. And it's very, very large. It's really nice. I think it would have been actually a little bit too large for the space, but I really like it. Again, it's super affordable, but this one is back stock till June 12th, 2019. So that definitely would be an option for us. We need to get something right away. And also this didn't have the sleeper sofa that we wanted. I looked at other sleeper sofas. They are really made for small apartments. So they're very, very small. Um, and I feel like because we have so many guests over, I didn't really want like one of those little foam mattresses. I really wanted something that was a little bit more substantial or something that we can replace when it gets worn out. So, that's kind of why we didn't go with like a futon or a sleeper sofa. And plus, I just didn't find anything that really suited my style. So those were all the ones that were comparable to this sofa that I picked from high end all the way to low end. So if you guys are interested in any of those, I'm gonna link them all in the description box below. But if you guys want to see how we attempted to do our DIY sofa, please keep on watching because I'm gonna get right into it. I was actually inspired by this picture here on Pinterest and I love the idea of like two kind of like twin mattresses as a sofa. We actually had one of these in our Airbnb in Lisbon when we were there last year and Dylan and I really liked it. There were a lot of rainy days in Lisbon where we actually had to stay inside for a few hours. We watched movies on it, it was super comfy and I liked the idea of it. However, we really knew that we needed a back on our sofa. We have radiators in the back of um, behind the sofa and also that's just not comfy after seeing that inspo picture and just thinking about our trip to Lisbon where we sat on something like that I felt very confident that we could DIY a sofa that meets all our expectations My mom was like, you know how much you're gonna spend like are you sure you want to DIY it? Are you sure you don't want to just buy something and honestly there were so many things like that I wanted in this piece of furniture So Dylan and I decided to take the chance and DIY it. We had the time so we decided to just go for it. So what we did was I looked online and found this bed called the Utaker or Utaker from Ikea. It actually comes in a two pack. So it could be a king size bed frame or it could be like two twin beds for like a kid's room or it could be a sofa. The bed frame is solid wood, which is great because we knew we were gonna be drilling into it and stuff like that. So grabbed those from Ikea. And we also grabbed eight of the back pillows from Ikea. They are called 
Fajarders or Fajarders. I don't know. I'll link them down below. And they were probably the least expensive Euro pillows that I can find in the city that I didn't have to order online and pay extra shipping and all that. So they were about $12 each and I had to get eight of them. So we got those from Ikea as well. So the mattresses, the pillows and all that was from Ikea. And then we headed over to Zara Home. And this is probably where most of the budget went and I really wanted a linen sofa so I spent a little bit more on linens and I'll go through the price breakdown for you guys later but the linens I got two twin fitted sheets eight euro shams to cover the pillows and then one king flat sheet because we needed some fabric to do the back part of the sofa and upholster it then we headed over to home hardware and we got the piece of plywood that is used for the back. Um, we got some screws and stuff like that. And then we headed over to the sewing supply store and we got batting, which is basically like a cotton sheet, almost like it's like fluffy a little bit. It's like you use it for upholstery. And then we got foam and this is two inch foam, I believe. So we got everything fitted for the sides of our sofa and we knew we wanted it to be kind of an L shape. So we brought the plywood up this around and down length and then we left one side empty so we decided to upholster it one night it was really really fun never really played around the staple gun before but it turned out so well guys so we decided to assemble the beds upholster the plywood and then screw everything into the backs and then once we fitted all the sheets on and added two things we actually want to add. We want to add the memory foam just to make our kind of less expensive mattresses a little more cushiony and it made such a huge difference guys. And then we added a mattress protector under the linen just because we are using this like every single day. So I, I wanted to make sure that we don't like, you know, destroy it. So um, we added those two things in, put all of the linens back on and it looks so so good i would say this project took us about three days just because we had to run all around the city and find out what we wanted and how much to pick up and i am so surprised like how well it turned out another thing we did was add a little hook to connect them on the back overall i think it turned out pretty dope so guys here is the complete sofa. I'm sorry that I didn't really explain how to make it any much more. We used about like, I think four screws on each piece of plywood on the back. And then we used an L bracket on the 90 degree angle right here, um, just to make sure everything was really secure. But overall plywood batting, a few wood screws, it's very, very, very stable. Like we've been hanging out on it. My brother, my sister, my whole family has pretty much come over. And then also my friends have come over and it's been okay and we love it. Um, and it was just really easy to put together. There is one Pinterest tutorial that kind of explains it a little bit further and it's a different look than ours, but I'm gonna link it in the description box below for you guys as well because it's very similar to our project except we just use like fitted sheets for the bed. One thing I like about this sofa is that it's so multifunctional and I know we're gonna have it for a long time. We can always wash the sheets, which I also love because there's not a lot of upholstered sofas where you can remove all the cushions and stuff like that. I love that you can push the two sections together and it makes a big comfortable king bed for your guests. We are able to actually put on a king size sheet on it for when guests come over. This one with the 90 degree angle that just kind of wraps around with the plywood, it really makes a nice day bed. So I know we're gonna be taking this into our places in the future if we ever want to kind of upsize our place. I feel like that this would make a really nice day bed in another room in the future. Because I film and I need a lot of full length shots because normally I do fashion videos here on YouTube, I love that I'm able to kind of shift the furniture around and it's super modular. It's not all connected in this one L-shaped piece like permanently. I'm able to unhook it all and kind of push it all to one side of the room. So in case I need a little bit more space for filming, I'm able to do that as well. And yeah, let's get into the price breakdown now. So price breakdown, drum roll please. Sofa cost. The Ikea Utaku beds were $1.99 for the pair, super good deal. The mattresses were $1.29 each. So total spent on just the mattresses and the bed frames was $4.57 Canadian. I also got eight of these Eurosham pillows. They were $12 each, so that equaled $96. 
And then linens, this is where I spent like a lot of money because I wanted linen sheets and they're expensive. But I got two twin fitted sheets from Zara Home. They were $49.90 each. I got eight Euro shams. They were two a pack, so I got four packs. They were $69.90 each. And then I got one King flat sheet and that was $99.90. I know guys, but wait a minute, there's more. <laughs> so Zara linens total cost me to furnish this whole sofa was $4.79.30. Sewing supplies, I got batting and foam, and it was actually a sale day at Fabricland, and I have a membership, so that cost me $1.99.38 before tax. And then I also picked up two memory foams from Wayfair. They're actually having a special on them, so those were $60 each, and I got two of them. The plywood was $37 for one piece. The mattress covers were 20 bucks each, so 40 in total for those. So I added everything up and my total pre-tax was $1,410. So this was probably the most expensive DIY I have ever done, but it was still a lot cheaper than a lot of the other options that I showed you guys. And I literally have everything I want for a sofa. I love it guys and I know in the future if we ever decide to get a king bed and want to dismantle the whole thing this would make a really great frame. I just think that there are so many different uses for this piece of furniture. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of furniture from Ikea, um, the bed frame I mean. Also I'm going to just do a little overview here. So here is our sofa fully completed. So I know a lot of you guys are asking where the pillows are from, I'm going to try to link my best as much as I can, like that's similar in the description box below, but I don't have everything. So um, these pillows and the decorative pillows right here, these are from HomeSense, but they definitely give like an anthropology vibe. These are actually um, textiles that I picked up at Rose Bowl Flea Market when I was in LA last, and I decided to make them into body pillows. We already have the inserts for them, but it was super easy. All you have to do is sew along the sides here. Fit them to your pillow and there you go. And then this little blanket is actually a king size blanket. This is from HomeSense as well and was on sale. So uber comfy, extra cool. You can lie in it and it's awesome. And everything is just really coming together. So. so I didn't spend any extra money on like decorative pillows and such because I already had either the textiles or the pillows already, because you guys may have recognized this from my bed and stuff like that. So yeah, <sighs> that was a workout. That is it guys. That is episode two of my apartment series. Keep an eye out for more episodes. I'm gonna try to push these out every single week for you guys till our apartment's complete and I can provide you guys an entire extensive apartment tour. But for now, here you guys go. I'm going to link the playlist also in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll get back to you guys soon. Bye guys.